Welcome back, Gwenters, for another episode of Gun Gwenting. This is going to round out our fourth and final starter deck. This one, for all of you guys who've been paying attention, will be Nilfgaard. Now, Nilfgaard, in my opinion, uh, is probably the best starter deck in terms of your ability to win with it. That's in no small part due to the fact that it actually, I'll show you this on the edit deck, actually has the highest provision cost of all of the starter decks. You can tell by how much it's using up here um, by what is remaining. So you have 24 remaining with this one. Uh, just as a comparison, we'll look at Scoia'tael starter deck. Uh, I had 31 remaining. Uh, Northern Realm starter deck. Uh, let's get down here. Northern Realm starter deck uh, was actually a little bit higher even. So uh, 18. But Northern Realms is very susceptible to Nilfgaard. I think a lot of that's due to the storyline of the Witcher, but just also how the, the cards interact. As you saw with Northern Realms, you can do a lot with them, so long as you get them out in the right order and the enemy doesn't do stuff to stop you prematurely. Um, Nilfgaard is all about stopping things prematurely. They don't have that many big point plays, so that is something to stay aware of. If you're going up against a monster's dominance deck, they are weak there. Uh, a lot of that's because dominance relies on deployabilities as opposed to orders or charges or uh, or um, passive buffs like those trains we've been talking about. Those cards that can just keep working at the end of your turn or beginning of your turn. Monsters don't rely on that. Monsters rely on a big play um, with a few big cards like you saw in our last video on Scoia'tael. Uh, and they can quickly get out of hand and cause you problems. So something to just keep in mind when you are playing with Nilfgaard is that you don't have those big point plays, but you have a lot of damage and lock abilities. Um, and you're going to see this more as you get more of the cards. Um, there's a few adds even within the starter card realm that you can use that will really benefit you. Okay. Key thing for for uh, for Nilfgaard, you want to use uh, this card right here, Nilfgaardian Knight, first when you go first. And we are going first, you can tell by the three redraws. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Slave Infantry. Uh, they can do a couple of key things for us, but I honestly would rather have Elder Bear. Alba Pikemen are great. Uh, emissaries, I'm gonna keep them just to show you how spying units work. I'd like to get a damage card or two in here. All right, now Nausicaa Sergeant is great. He's gonna boost himself whenever I use deploy ability. Um, but this Nilf Guardian Knight, I just don't like boosting enemy units, especially when, although you know it might actually be useful here. So a lot of times you can just throw him away. Uh, now if I play it and it's empty, it won't boost an enemy unit, but he is using uh, Ursine Ritual. So you're not gonna see this when you play for the first few rounds, I'm guessing as a new player. But uh, this will be a good experience for you to see how a different leader ability does totally different things. Um, so we'll get right into that. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot. This isn't our last starter deck. We're, we still have Skellige. I'm, I'm forgetting all about my Skelligas. Um, the good old Skelligers. Uh, don't worry. We haven't forgotten about them. I will do one more final video to cover Skellige. They are complicated. <laughs> I don't know a better way to describe that. Um, Skellige are, uh, Skelligers are, are big, bold warriors. Think Vikings, uh, who, who thrive in the, in their bloodlust for battle. Um, yeah. So you're gonna find that. The, the, but this is gonna show you one side of Skellige, which is they rely on being damaged. Now, the more damage they take, the more powerful they will become. Um, think of just like a, a crazed berserker in the middle of battle um, and the crazy stuff they can do together. All right, Saris recently got a buff, so if you have her and you haven't used her, she is great to use. Um, she was kind of mediocre before because she would have to draw a unit from your deck. She now spawns and summons. So uh, she, uh, my favorite combo is one he just did. Uh, you can spawn a Drummond Shield Maiden, 
uh, Drum and Shield Maiden is this one. When this unit is damaged, summon all copies of it from your deck to this row. So you can leave both of your Shield Maidens in your deck, spawn one, damage it using your leader ability, which this leader ability, Ursine Ritual, will damage an allied unit by one, and summon the other two to that row. So this card right here, if you count this up, that is a 15 point play, and it weeded cards from your deck. I mean, it is just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. But we are gonna have a little bit of fun with it. So uh, Alba Pikemen have this fun ability where at the end of every allied turn, damage a random unit on the melee row by one. Now she's already pulled out these cards. So normally I wouldn't wanna do this because I wouldn't wanna passively trigger their ability. I wanna force him to use one of his leader abilities to do that. And you're gonna think, well, why would I wanna force him to use a leader ability that damages himself? You're gonna find that some of these units, especially from the Svalblod cult, uh, really rely on that damage. Uh, they really need it to get, to get buffed up. All right, so he just played Harald, Houndsnout, with um, these. Uh, so when Harald gets played, he spawns these Harald's pals. I'm like, oh, that's only a seven point play at a nine provision cost card. That's not a great deal. Oh, but it is. So every turn, he has a cooldown that damages an allied unit by one. And these guys, whenever they die, they damage a random enemy unit by two. So every time one of those dies, they're gonna damage an enemy unit by two. Notably, and importantly, that means they're gonna damage these Alba Pikemen by two every time they get hit. So, um, I just wanna be aware of that. I'm gonna throw out a larger card that's gonna give me a little bit of a buffer. We're gonna get rid of this Elder, elder Bear, and then we're gonna just buff up these Alba Pikemen. That way when they take a hit, they can keep going. Um, Importantly, too, about that, I did I did boost him to nine, so Geralt could kill them. But honestly, if he wants to use a Geralt to get rid of my Alba Pikeman, all the better. Oh, there we go. He used a uh, he used a Mer uh, a Giga Scorpion Venom. So this one, a decoction. Sorry, it will damage a unit by one six times. That's really helpful and has some good synergy with some other cards in that deck. Um, but I don't want to die, so I'm going to show you how to use. I'm going to show you how to use a, a spying card. So first off, the more chances I have to evade this Harold's Pal token, the better. I'd rather kill off other units. So we're going to play down the spying unit to that same front row. And we're going to boost our pikemen by seven. Um, so that's a great play there. So now we are back tied, so long as we don't kill that guy, and we are taking the lead by one. So, spying units are actually your units, but you play them to the, your opponent's side of the board. You can use them to ruin, uh, like, Pavko's ability, as you saw in my, in my uh, Scoia'tael deck. He will only do one damage instead of two when there is a card on his side that is not Scoia'tael. And this Emissary is not Scoia'tael. He is Nilfgaard. So he can kind of ruin things for them in that way. All right, so they are still hacking away at me. I think right now he is building up to do uh, to do a, a special card combo, one of my favorites actually, but we are just gonna keep trucking along. These are both soldiers. So remember, you can check right here whenever you have a unit that says damage an enemy unit by one, increase damage by one for each adjacent soldier. So we can do that, so we're going to. So we're just going to play this up here and we're going to get Harold down to one. Um, and I think that's going to round it out for us. So something also to pay attention to here. Strategic Withdrawal is going to move a Nilf Guardian unit to my hand, boost it by two, and then I get to play another card. So uh, it can allow me, like you saw with that, um, that Death Wish deck in the last video that the monsters were using, uh, this will allow me to do uh, multiple things with these cards. All right, so we went first, and we have now gotten ourselves into that pickle I always warn you guys not to get into. Um, but I think we're gonna play down this emissary, forces Svalbard Cultist to, to attack him. This is gonna put us up by just a little bit, uh, and I think we can call it at this point. So Svalbard Cultist will damage the unit to the right by one, and then boost himself by two. He is great to play with armor Drakkar, because Drakkar uh, has these two armor, and then every time he loses the armor, 
he's gonna boost himself by one. And then if there are two damage units, he's gonna boost himself by two instead. And then if he has no armor, he's actually gonna gain two armor. So every time that Salar Occultist knocks off the armor, he's gonna get boosted by at least one, if not two, if there's two of my units damaged. And then he's gonna get his armor back all over again. So that is, and, and he, look, this is important. Cultus is a six point card, provision cost wise, and the Armored Dracar is a five point card. And just think about over four rounds. I mean, that one makes the Trident Infantry and Temerian Drummer combo look weak, right? I mean, it is just such a fantastic card combo that you can use. Uh, all right, so he played Grimmest. At least we got a, a reasonably good card out of his deck. He has a Purify ability that can refresh every time you play uh, an Alchemy card, which are these special cards that are usually always uh, Skellige cards, I'll say Alchemy on them. So he's a pretty good card if uh, if I'm relying on locks uh, and other such stuff. All right, so I'm gonna do something a little weird here. I am gonna steal his Ceres. I don't want him to be able to play it from the graveyard. I just wanna show you how the Seize works. I also know that that Svalbard Cultus is gonna get boosted to nine next turn, and I really don't wanna be down a card. So I'm gonna steal his Ceres. He's no longer going to be able to use her. And we're going to go ahead and end the turn. Now, at the end of his next turn, he is going to get boosted to nine on the Svalbard Priest. Oh, look at that. He got three blood first, though. So now that, that, that Armored Drakkar is now boosted to eight. Um, but I'm going to be able to play Geralt. And I'm going to knock him out of the game. I just don't want to have to deal with him. He has worked too many points. And we now have a nine point lead make that a 10 point lead um all right who is he gonna banish that pike all right um okay we're in an interesting position here we are tied and i think i am gonna let this ride so you gotta learn something new here too so whenever you uh tie around we'll see if he does it as well but if you ever tie around you will both get one half of a crown oh he did all right, he played Royal Decree. This is a fantastic card. It'll let you play any unit from your deck. Uh, I think it's more of a mid-game card. I wouldn't worry about building that as your first, and we'll get into that in my next video series. Uh, how to pull kegs, how to get cards, how to choose which cards to build. Um, it really only works well when you can pull a card that you really want to play. Uh, otherwise, it you know, it's, it has a mediocre effect. All right, Alzor's Thunder does that five damage. I like Treason more. We're gonna save Treason, get rid of Alzor's Thunder. All right, perfect. We got Imperial Brigade. I didn't get rid of Slave Infantry because I just don't like that. Um, slave Infantry are good to get rid of status effects because they transform a unit, um, but that's about it. They can also, if you have a damaged unit, you can you can boost them back up again. We're gonna play this Imperial Brigade. We're gonna summon the other unit out. We're gonna end turn. All right, we have even cards. We lost card advantage, um, but we didn't have it in the first place because we let out. So this was kind of the hand we were dealt, as it were. Um, so we got Alba Pikeman back again. All right, perfect. And we got the best card combo, in my opinion, that exists in the starter decks. You have Serret and Ox. Two witchers who can ruin people's days. All right, and we got Alba Armored Cavalry, which gives us a lock. Um, I don't really care about the damage so much. All right, perfect, we get two locks. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna force him to play to one row. So we're gonna play our, even though he doesn't have anything on that row, I wanna force him to play all of his cards to one row. That way I can use this treason ability. Now it's gonna choose an enemy unit and damage the adjacent units by its power. So if he, the goal is to get three units, the one in the middle being the highest, and then he will damage the two side units by his power. Uh, or if they can all be the same, honestly, that's even better. So we're going to play out this uh, uh, these pikemen to force him to attack there. If he doesn't attack, uh, if he doesn't place there, he might try to kill this pikeman. Uh, and that would be a good draw out of that kill anyway. So, All right, Madahuri. So she's a great card. She has a great high base power. So here's hoping that he places cards on either side of her. Now, she... Um, what she's going to do, she is part of the newest expansion. She is going to... So if neither player has passed, so we're both still playing, and I do not have a full hand, then I draw the lowest card 
cost card from my deck and he draws the highest cost card. Now cost refers to the provision cost. So basically he's gonna get his best card and I'm gonna get my worst card. So just something to think about. All right, so now most of my other cards are relying on him to do things. So we're gonna actually play this Alba Spearman now. Just attack with Matahari. I want to save these other cards. These block cards are going to ruin his day. He's going to play some cards where he really wants it. This is a perfect example. Blue Boy Lugos. Hate that guy. Um, and these are the perfect counter to all the Spearmen. Right? He's got a Pikeman. These guys are going to do one damage every turn to this guy. And every time he takes damage, he's going to damage a random unit of mine by two. So there's a great kind of response, especially if he has a healing card, he can just keep healing him and doing damage to me every time I'm doing damage to him. But we are Nilfgaard. We're not gonna stand for that. So we're gonna lock him. Now, the way a lock works is it will stop him from doing status that disables a unit's abilities. Note that that's plural. So anytime they have some kind of special ability that is not a deploy ability, I mean, deploy has already occurred, right? It happened when he played that card or she played that card out onto the board. Lock is gonna stop them when they have these passive abilities, like they uh, take damage and then deal damage. Uh, when, they, uh, when they go to the graveyard, then they will pull something out. When they have an order, like you saw with Northern Realms, when they boost the unit next to them, as you saw with Northern Realms, it's gonna stop all of those things. And, if he had saved his Grimmest card, the way to get around that is to play this card and purify it. So, uh, ooh, that worked out great for us that he played that card in the first round. That's why I said he played a better card. Even though it's only a seven provision cost card, that's still pretty high. And it's a bad throwaway against a Nilfgaard deck. Nilfgaard just relies on either blocks, and you'll see in the later game, poisons. Uh, or bleeding a bit as well, but really locks and poisons, uh, both of which are status effects, both of which you need purify to get rid of, and both of which will just ruin your life. All right, so now what we wanna do is we're gonna lock this guy as well. So this is that same armored Jakar, he's gonna try to use that same, uh, that same card combo, and we are gonna pass, uh, we're gonna end that turn, Gonna keep doing one random damage down there. All right, now you are gonna see some fun times uh, with some of my cards. All right, so we need, we're need we gonna do a little bit of math here. All right, so uh, our leader ability is gonna allow us to attack his cards twice. So I wanna try to see if I can get kill this Svalbard Priest. He's gonna go up to seven points next time. Um, and my I can do... With my ox, I can do eight damage in one turn. Uh, or I can use this now and then kill him next turn because he'll be less than four. So let's actually use treason. Get rid of Matahari. Get that guy down one. And we're gonna let him go one more turn. That's gonna get rid of that armor on that uh, on that armored Drakkar as well. Prayer is patient, but she brooks All right, no so. Uh, Sarah is gonna do four damage if Ox is in my hand. So this is why they're a great card combo, but it does rely on drawing and you often can't use them until your final turn because you have to have the other one in your hand, which means the one that goes first is going to do more damage. It's kind of the opposite of those crones we saw in the monsters deck. So I am gonna play down Sarah because I want to ruin this guy's life and kill off this Svalbard Priest. Every turn he's getting boosted by two and he's just attacking armor and then he's gonna get that armor down and get that boost and I don't want that. So we're gonna get rid of him. All right, now on the other hand, what I can do uh, is I can play Ox first. And when I play Ox first, he's gonna lock a unit on, uh, on his side of the board, but not only will he lock that unit, he'll lock all copies of that unit. And he just played down, down Svalbard Fanatic. This guy's gonna transform into a bear abomination uh, when he goes down to two hit points, which is a six point card instead of a four point card. And this totem is going to damage adjacent units by two. So this would be a good example of a great time to play a spying unit right here so that he would deal damage to it by two, but I can't do that. So instead, 
we're gonna pull Sarah back into my hand and I'm gonna show you what Ox does with his ability. So we're gonna play down Ox and we're gonna go ahead and lock those bears. And then we have to make our final play. So we will play him down and we're gonna get rid of that bear, do two damage to him. So if he ever uses that ability, he's just gonna kill his bear and not be able to do anything about it. So uh, as you saw there, we also boosted our unit by two. So we had great combos going on there. Now he saved his best unit for last. Champion of Slavod, you saw how he was only worth five points. Once he goes down to two health, he boosts himself to 12. And then his leader ability allowed him to spawn that bear abomination. So he came back for a massive point blast at the end. Uh, hard to counter that uh when you don't have card advantage and it's also the champion of slot is not a starter deck card um he is a great investment card and as you saw today he had a few different cards that you hadn't seen before that really worked really well together and we're going to talk a little bit about how you can buy one or two or three cards using some extra scraps that you've earned in those reward trees or from extra cards from kegs and get one or two specific cards to alter the entire gameplay of your starter deck. Um, you have some extra provision cost points as you saw me showing at the beginning of this video and you wanna use those a little bit more effectively. You wanna get out those useless bears that are worth six points but don't do anything for you and sub in some characters that give you more synergy that, uh, that have a lot of benefits uh, and we're gonna show you what some of those are. But until then, get out there, go Gwenting and bring a friend along with you.